Hey everybody, um, welcome to an introduction to design thinking. Um, this is a practical session, by the way, so I think the best way to learn is to get you guys to do some stuff. Um, so there will be some stuff, we've got markers and stuff, and uh, there'll be some stuff to do on computers if you have your laptops as well. Um, but first, quick introductions. Um, my name's Mark, I'm a UX director at Indeed. And today we're joined by Arthur, who is a UX designer, and Sion, who is a UX designer at Indeed. We also have Mitchell in the corner, who's here to help out with some of the working sessions. He's a UX dev at Indeed. Okay. First question in the room, I'm just curious. How many of you know Indeed? Can I have a quick show of hands? Okay. <laughs> Not quite half. Awesome. Um, Indeed is... America's largest job board or platform. Um, we have presence all over the world. Um, our main markets are the US, Japan, Europe, and various other countries. Um, but my team specifically focuses on the US product. And indeed, mission is very simple. We help people get jobs. Um, we are a tech company that does this. So everything that we do is through technology, through apps, through websites, and else. Um, within Indeed, it's broken up into multiple different departments and organizations. So specifically, we work on what is known as the job seeker organization. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and in job seeker, we have an equally simple mission, which is every worker understood better jobs delivered. And through design thinking, we can achieve this. So by understanding more workers and more people looking for jobs, <laughs> then we can help them find the best job for them. And through technology and through various different methodologies, we help deliver those jobs to the right people at the right time. Uh, next. And so what we've got for you today is an introduction to design thinking, then it's your turn. So we're gonna break out into small groups and go through a bunch of exercises and then a space for Q&A and sharing. And so what we're hoping to do with this session is you're gonna utilize this hopefully in your hackathon and it will help you get to better solutions. It will help you solve real world problems and hopefully end result is that you win the hackathon effectively. Um, that's the goal. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Sian to introduce Design Thinking. Thanks, Mark, and thank you everyone for coming to this workshop. Uh, my name is Sega, and it's so nice to meet you guys. Uh, I'm here to my and feed, and today I'll be going through what is design thinking? All right, so uh, what is design thinking anyway? <laughs> so we're talking about this like new term, design thinking. Has anyone heard of design thinking before? Anyone? Yeah, quite a few. Okay, couple. So that's why. That's why. So design thinking, like we know what design means, we know what thinking means. So what do we mean by design thinking? Um, well, it's rather simple actually. Um, it's a method that designers have been using for years to solve some real world problems that we're facing. Um, so. Designers is, you know, it's just not just like limited to UX <laughs> designers or graphic designers, but really designers of, of all sorts have been using um, these methodologies to solve real world problems. Um, but a lot of professions do like problem solving, right? So why do we need it to, why did we need to like name it specially? Um, it's, it's really because we realize at what point, um, although I'm not an expert in the history of design, that real world problems are super, super complicated. And, and the reason partially is because these problems, like who are facing these problems? It's us, right? Like we're trying to solve human problems, people problems, and humans, as you know, as I know, we're all very complicated. So the problems that we face and the problems that we want to solve are also very complicated in nature. And so that kind of warranted a new way of thinking, like a process that has evolved into what we've been calling for the past maybe 15, 20 years, Called design thinking. So again, design thinking is at the end of the day, it's a problem-solving process. 
Um, but again, there are some special things about it that make it, you know, deserve a special name of its own. Um, so we're, we're just going to go through like some of the principles of design thinking, and I hope you can kind of understand these principles and remember that these are very centric to what design thinking is. So first of all, design thinking is customer centric. Sorry, the texts are very small here, but I'll, I'll try to read it out loud. Um, so design thinking is a customer centric uh, problem solving method. We also say that it's like user centric or human centric. You'll see it in a lot of different flavors, but at the end of the day, what we mean by that is we're trying to focus on the person that is facing the problem. So we don't focus on you know, anything else. We focus on what that person is going through or what that group of people is going through. Why is it a problem? What's the context they're facing the problem in? Like, how are they feeling? What are they thinking? What's going through their heads? Um, so that's what we're trying to like really focus on. Okay. All right, cool. So that's the first principle of my thinking, being customer centric people-centric. Um, another pillar of design thinking is that you get to be creative, right? So that's a, that's a huge part. Um, in design thinking, like the process itself, and you will experience this today later on, but the process really enables you to be creative, think out of the box, and think of many different ideas and solutions before you get to one solution or two that you really want to test out. Um, so that's another thing that makes design thinking a little bit more special. The third point is that it is iterated. Um, so you might have seen like apps and like some of these apps have like really cool release notes on app stores. I don't know if you guys have seen those like YouTube where it's really fun release notes and stuff. And sometimes in those like releases, we as designers like we ship out new features. Um, but then when we like ship out a feature, it never really stops there. We try to iterate, we try to do it again, get it right again. Because again, the thing about humans, we're very complex. So when you get a design out there, you see people reacting to it, you see a lot of different responses, and from there you can learn even more about the user that you haven't known before. So that helps us to be like creative and you know have a like a cycle. Um, and that's really what's important about design thinking. It never like stops at a linear one like waterfall kind of process. Um, and the last thing, but not least, is that design thinking is collaborative. Um, here you will work with a team, uh, or learner, but then even in the workplace, you won't be working alone um, as a designer. You will have like a group of teams to, to work with you. And if you think about it, being collaborative means that you can be more creative and customer centric, right? Because you will have more brains um, involved and like you can think of more creative ideas and because you have different points of view, you can really be more empathetic about the people that you're designing. So that's that was a few principles about design thinking. And like you might be thinking, like, okay, so that's the principles, and that's what we're trying to follow. But then, okay, like tell me what the process looks like, because I wrote there it's a process, right? <laughs> um, and this is an example of it. Like you can go on to Google later when you get home and then Google like design thinking process, you'll see a bunch of different processes. Um, and depending on the agency that came up with it or the company that came up with it, you might see slightly different flavors of the diagram. But at the end of the day, this is kind of what you will see. Um, this is the, the general gist of design thinking. Um, again, you might see like five steps or six steps, but um, it will be a process. It will be an iterated process, which is why you see those lines going like back and forth. And then you will see a few steps. So, um, so yeah, so that's like an example of process, um, but you might be curious, like how will this process be done in real life? So um, that's the next part. Like how do you actually do design thinking? We just showed you a process, but how is it actually done? Um, now that diagram just now has six steps, but we just wanted to kind of simplify it a little bit. So you don't, doesn't feel like something you have to memorize. And actually, design thinking comes down to these three steps discover, use my pointer, um, design, and then demonstrate. So, I want you to like go back to the principles that I talked about and try to remember which of them apply to these processes. Hopefully, all of them, um, but just remember back to the principles. So, it's going to all start with discover. So, discover right here 
is all about defining the problem and understanding the customer. So remember how we said design thinking is about customer centricity. So here you're really trying to understand who are we designing for, what kind of problems are they facing? Not just that, but like what are they doing when they're facing the problem? What are they feeling? What do they do before and after? What are you trying to achieve? What are their goals and needs? And, and really trying to understand the person that you're trying to solve for. Um, and then once you've got that understanding, you have all those like interesting insights, you turn them into interesting ideas. So you look at the problem and say, okay, what can we do to solve that problem? But remember we said it was a creative process, right? So you don't just, you know, try to think of one idea, you try to think of multiple, many, as many ideas as possible, um, and then also bring them to life. So here we sometimes use like sketches, hand-drawn sketches, or, you know, like some diagrams to kind of explain what kind of ideas we have. And then um, the next step is now that you have some ideas and also some like maybe early sketches or early representation of your ideas, you would bring that and prototype it. So um, Arthur later on will show you like what these look like in um, the real world place, but uh, prototyping is, is really about bringing the idea, the raw ideas like to life through maybe clickable prototypes, or if we have engineers here, you know, um, through like actual prototypes that are developed. Um, and then you would test those ideas because we want to see if it works, if it's an idea that works or not. Um, so that at the demonstrate stage, we're also putting this out to users. Sometimes it's in like a sample group or sometimes it's like we release it out and then we see what, how people react to it. Last but not least, we did say it's an iterative process. So you can see that it's going back into Discover where you're taking all the learnings that you have from all the tests and then doing it all over again. You, you, you know more about the users so you can make a better solution. Um, so it's like the, that's, those are the three key steps of design thinking. Um, it is a bit simplified, but really that's the gist of it. Cool, so that was what design thinking was. Um, I hope it wasn't too much of a lecture. I was just gonna pass it off to Arthur for the next few slides. Yeah, so, yeah, so why should we care about design thinking? Yeah, so for the short term, which is the hackathon, you know, it helps you identify problems, come up with ideas, and hopefully, you know, it speaks to the usefulness criteria and the creativity criteria in your judging criteria, and hopefully you can do better there. Uh, on the long term, it's for better products as well. So it's essentially providing a process to like innovation and creativity, and ensures that we solve problems and actually provide value for users. So like design thinking in action. So this is actually done by my team, like the team I'm in. So I'm in the education team. So if you could recall just now, like Mark was talking about how Indeed helps people get jobs. So for us, we are thinking about how do we help people get the education, skills needed to get jobs. So yeah. So first like, oh, how do we help people get the skills needed to get jobs? So now we think about gathering inspiration and actually learning about the user, the customers, Kind of talk to various types of like education seekers and understand like their behavior, their pain points, and then after that, eventually we start thinking about ideas like mm -hmm. maybe like they don't really know what skills are needed for the job or the career they are they're aiming for. Maybe we can show them what skills are needed or what certs are needed. And like oh, and then like oh, if we go one step further, they're like oh, we need to like have them action on these skills. So maybe you can like show them courses to actually like learn the skill. And of course, like uh, to make these ideas tangible, like you're thinking of making this career page with like the missing skills, and of course, like how to get them to courses. And of course, like it's iterative and we need like some form of benchmark. So when we test it, we kind of need to know what the success metrics are. So in this case, it's kind of thinking about, oh, are users engaging with the content? Like, do they find this content useful? And of course, like down the line, ultimately, does it help them get the job? So if you look at another example, which is Airbnb, so they are thinking like, oh, why aren't Airbnb hosts like getting enough bookings for their listings? So when they actually went to talk to users, they were they were thinking like, okay, let's talk to the Airbnb Airbnb host and observe them, and we realize that they have really bad photos in their <laughs> listings. So how can we solve this? So we have some ideas here, like, oh, maybe we can do photography tutorials. Maybe we can do like photo editing features within Airbnb, the app. 
like, oh, maybe you can like hire photographers. So in the end, like, I think they went along with a different idea, which is to offer like free photography services uh, to 10 hosts to really just like test the idea out, right? So, so, it's, so then like they have these success metrics again. So are these listings getting more bookings? Like, does it actually help? And of course, like are users clicking on these things? So yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah. And of course, like back to like, you know, the deliverables. So framing the question just now kind of saw it. So when we gather inspiration, we use like deliverables like this quote analogy, which we'll be using later. Empathy maps, and when you generate ideas, it could be like pen and paper sketches. It doesn't need to be very like high fidelity, like super detailed, just need to get the idea across. And as we get like the I make the ideas more and more tangible, you add more detail to it. We sometimes don't even need to jump into a design software yet. We can like do even more detailed sketches. And then obviously eventually maybe like it goes on big or something. And yeah, the last one, of course, you have to test it with users somehow. Yeah. So as we visit the schedule, so we just finished that whole intro. And now we're gonna talk about the lightning decision jam, which we will all be doing. So now I'll pass the time back to Sergio. Yeah. On design thinking. Okay, so now I've been sitting for like 20 minutes, so I don't want you to stay here for the whole day. And then, okay, you are going to be here for the whole day, but we don't want you to be like just sitting in that spot. So we're going to do a fun lightning decision jet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love the enthusiasm. Okay, so going back again, product design, design thinking is creative problem solving. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of creative problem solving, but before that, a few more principles for today's design thinking exercise. So you're going to get really hands on, we're going to like pass you some markers and stuff. Um, so just remember these principles as you are doing design thinking today. First one is together alone. So you're going to, you're going to put yourself into groups, um, and it's going to be a group exercise, but even if it's together and we want you guys to discuss remember that at the end of the day you have to like contribute ideas as an individual and also that is very respected so please um remember it's together alone so we'll, we'll sometimes talk in groups but then sometimes you'll have your own time to ideate and think of um think of stuff so that's the first principle second one you don't need to discuss everything so we're gonna have steps in the design thinking workshop where we're gonna get all right, we're going to get you to like uh, present your ideas and then talk about them, but you don't have to discuss everything. You don't have to like debate about every single idea. It's going to take the whole day. So don't feel compelled to do that. Um, getting started is better than being right. So we're not thinking about like the world's best idea or the, the right, the most right idea that doesn't even exist. But um, so really putting that idea down is the most important thing. So as many ideas as you can, just feel free to write whatever you think. Someone might think it's a gem, you know, you might think it's just like some random idea, some might, someone might turn it into a gem. So getting started is more important. Um, and don't just solely rely on creativity. You don't feel too compelled to make everything like super out of the box um, or super creative. You can definitely use your creative creativity and it's encouraged, but don't feel too compelled to make everything super um, or no you. Um, yeah, so we obviously can't show you a full design sprint in a matter of a few hours that we have today. So instead, we're going to do a few exercises to show you what it's like to have a streamlined decision making. And that's what's called the lightning decision jam. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to get, we're going to ramp up and get started, right? Can I have a show of hands? How many people don't have laptops with you today? Nobody? Awesome. Right. Oh, just one. Oh, one. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, we can work that out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no worries. Yeah. So we're going to dive into the Lightning Decision Jack. So the LDJ is a creative problem solving loop. So essentially, you'll be coming up with stickies, but it's digital. Then after that, you'll be voting on ideas on the stickies, then you'll be prioritizing those ideas, and then after that, you need some notes, like a more visual version. Yeah, so if you're noting, coming up with your ideas, 
with a you know together alone principle, uh, sticking them up, but this will be digital. <laughs> uh, voting also digital, and of course we'll be doing some prioritizing exercises. Uh, so now it's your turn. Um, yeah, form groups of four to six. I think there's not that many people today in form groups of four. Uh, it doesn't have to be a hackathon group. Uh, just come up with a group name and find a cozy space in this space it's not auditorium and make sure you can still see and hear us and yeah you can just uh, go to this uh, link on your computer uh, and yeah so i think feel free to move chairs around to yeah. to kind of form the room and yeah. During that way, I have to Yeah, you are back to Okay, okay, so I'm just gonna give like a quick like intro to Miro in case like y'all don't know. I like, uh actually how many of you have used Miro before? Oh, so like it's pretty chill. Okay, so I'll just do this part fast. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's pretty okay. You can just throw normally. Like move up and down, and if you press space bar, and I like move drag and left, 
I can just try doing that. That's how you move around. And of course, like there are a few tools here. The main one you'll be using is this thing, you know. So Okay, so you know, I type it. Oh, yeah. And yeah, and of course, like, uh, there is command Z, command, uh, command Z still works. Like, I can't do it. Uh, you can zoom in and out. So you have to hold, like, uh, the mouse wheel and then hold command. And, like, you can zoom in and out. And I think that's pretty much uh, the basics. Like everyone, like you all fit. Yeah. Anybody having trouble? I can tell you, but it's not like everything on the page. Oh, I'm So that's the theme that we're going to do today. And you know, these are just some thought starters as we brainstorm the problems. It's not just buses and MRTs. It can also be grab, project, and typing, right healing. It can also be air travel. It's like really just transportation in general. And of course, like, uh, you know, we are all customers. So like you can think in terms of the user as a customer, but there's also like other types of users, other stakeholders, like it could be the driver, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah, what problems do these people face? And of course, you can think about the broad end-to-end -end journey. Uh, no pun intended, but I think there was some pun intended. Okay, anyway, and what do you do before like getting on public transport? What do you do like after? What do you do during public transport? Yeah, so just think about this. Uh, and yeah, and before you start, like uh, do discuss among your groups to choose like one mode of transport uh, per group so that you get like you know, deeper problems and deeper solutions. So actually, yeah, y'all can discuss that now. Yeah. <laughs> so open now is just choose a mode of public transport that you want to properly solve that end. Yes. Yes. So it could be MRP, could be bus, could be train, could be Thank you. 
then we could say, okay, it's something we have something like Zoom, so it helps us to collaborate remotely and flexibly. Um, we have something like Google Docs where we can like work real time, or we could even have like something like, oh, people are very um, open ears and they're very listening, they're well, good listeners, and that's why our collaboration works well. So those are some of the examples. So you have to do the same thing for the transport, the mode of transport that you picked. What's moving that forward? What's going well about that <laughs> mode of transport? And we're going to give you five minutes. At any time, you have all of us to help you. So put your hands up if you're not clear or if you just want some help. Any questions? No. Okay. With this one, it's mostly alone. So just kind of make as many post-its on the, the space as possible. It doesn't matter if within your group that do Great. So I'll start my uh, can you put the thing that's
The next step will be holding that. It's fine. It's okay. If it's not true, I think it will be fine. You know, if you're not being properly regulated, unless they look like you don't know that they can buy scratch, they can buy the guy. Okay, final fifteen seconds. Usually we would like stick them up either on a whiteboard or like a wall, um, and then we would kind of like uh, go through them. But then um, for, for this exercise, we're just going to go into um, the second stage. We're not going to discuss them at this point. Um, we're going to first go into what's holding us back. So the same thing, but everything below the boat. Uh, we're going to spend about 10 minutes thinking about what is holding us back. So these are again some examples based on that whole collaboration idea. But I think you guys are doing pretty well. So continue, please continue with what is holding. I have to say, as a non local, when I moved to Singapore, I heard everybody just talking about how good the public transport system is, but I don't see a lot of good things in the post it. So I, I mean, excited to see, I'm excited to see what you think is going wrong. Um, yeah. Right. So I'm going to start the thing so yeah, you Thank you. 
I don't I'm 
We did this. Okay, so now we're going to do the voting. So this is like a silent vote. Essentially, everyone do, does their own voting. And I actually have these like red sticky notes on the mirror board. They thought I'll demo. Uh, everyone has three votes each. And you can use uh, more than one vote on an idea if you like it like a lot, a lot. And of course, like we just did a clustering, right? So you can either vote on, you know, one big cluster, one big group, or you can vote on one specific sticky note. So yeah, uh, let me just like quickly show. Yeah, so for example, like there's these like right, red sticky ones right here, right? You just like drag them, and then I'll just put them here, and then that's the board. Let me just like make them more like. Is everybody clear on what they're doing? So it's it's what's important to you as an individual, like which problem do you care about? Right? We're not voting on the good things, we're only voting on the, the issue. Very Okay, so everyone clear? If so, I'm just going to start the timer, yeah? Uh, both team, everyone okay? Yeah. 
You could put a delivery dot on one idea. If you really believe that's the most important thing that you can solve, put three dots on one Uh, okay, everyone. So we're gonna move on to the next step. Okay. Okay. So essentially, now we're just gonna from all the voting and stuff, we're gonna choose like your top three challenges you wanna tackle, and like of course, like if you booked it, you can like drag the whole group, or if not, it could be like just one specific sticky note. All is good. And yeah. Uh, so you can just like drag it over to like this side. So essentially, yeah, uh, just drag it over to the top tree underneath here. And yeah. So it's literally restricted to the problems that have the most votes. It, it's not a discussion about, you know, uh, oh, I think this one with only one vote is more important. It is the, the, I, the problems that have the most votes. If there's a draw, then it's a discussion. So if you have multiple with like two votes or three votes, then it's a discussion. Yeah, okay, so I'll start the timer. Yeah. I believe it's <laughs> okay. 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 
Okay, so you can share, please. Hello. Okay, awesome. So you've arranged and um, selected the top three challenges. So we're going to go on to the next step. And you have to focus because it, get, it gets a little challenging here. So we're going to turn them into how might we. Now, anyone, um, sh please show up your hands if you've heard of how might we or HMWs before. If you've heard of it. Okay, we have one there. <laughs> you have an expert, right? <laughs> yeah, so cool. So how might we? We're gonna turn your top three voted problems into how might we? Now, what are how might we? They're kind of questions that are led by HMW, which stands for how might we, um, followed by a sentence or which is a question that will help us to guide like the problem that we're solving for. So this is the stage where we are defining the problem based on the little insights that you have selected. So let's say, for example, we did our own little workshop and then we thought our insight is when we're collaborating, some people tend to get more tasks than others, right? Like, like freeloaders, if you remember, to your project groups. And then, um, and then we turn that into a how might we statement because that's really an insight. It's a challenge we're facing. It's a problem that we decided to solve through voting. So how do we turn that into a problem statement that we want to work on to think of ideas? So here we said, how might we make sure that everyone gets delegated sufficient tasks for a project? Like that's an example. Um, but just a quick note on how to write good how might we's. We have some examples here. For example, if we're thinking about like um, the tax filing system, uh, you might not have done that before, but like an example of an how might we could be, how might we make users feel confident that they're filing their taxes correctly? Correct. Um, if we're looking at like an online shopping space and we thought about some like um, pain points there, so how might we could be, how might we make the return process quick and intuitive? Um, and then lastly, if we're looking at some students and then we were looking at um, how they're planning for their modules for the semester, the how might we could be, how might we support users to efficiently plan their courses for the semester? So you're trying to make it into a, you're trying to make the problem that you identified and voted for into a slightly broader kind of a problem statement that you want to work on to generate ideas. Anything to add? Any questions? Oh yeah, sorry about that. We skipped the slide. I am so sorry. So the most important slide, I guess. Um, so this is a template that we've prepared. So you can use this template. Um, how might we action and what is going to happen with the action for the customer or the target user that you're thinking about in order to drive what change, right? So I hope you can see all this action what customer and what change. So feel free to use this template. I'm gonna have about 15 minutes to write these. These can be a bit difficult to write and writing good how might we can really change the kind of ideas that you bring. So do put your hand up. We're gonna be walking around and helping you um, to write them as well. So one how might, um, three, was it three how might we for a problem? Uh, one more time. Oh, we just, okay. Yeah. So. You'll have 15 minutes to write the how might we's and yeah, let us know if you face any challenges. Sorry, one quick note, um, due to the time constraints, we're gonna shorten this to 10 minutes. So yeah, we'll, we'll help you, so don't worry.
All right. Uh, okay. So we're gonna uh, see the next step. Everyone. Okay. Yeah. Everyone. So we're gonna do step seven, which is uh the solutioning. Okay. Uh. So in the interest of time, this will be kind of like our last step. So this is essentially the time for you to look at your how my we's and start thinking of ideas. And we recommend doing this method. That's why I gave you all the paper. So it's called crazy eights. So you have to fold it in eight parts. So he's going to demo like, wow, amazing. Wow. 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 This isn't rocket science by any means, but you should be left with eight squares. Oh, okay. yep. Wow, origami. Wow. <laughs> okay, so after that, like essentially, you just spend one minute per square. Okay, oh, folding. Okay, I just fold some more first. Yeah, so everyone okay? Everyone. Um, so one thing with this one is um, there's a concept in design that your first idea is not your best idea. So the idea behind this crazy eights is just to get as many ideas on paper as possible as quickly as possible. So you can either pick one how might we and do eight squares based on your one how might we or you can choose a couple of them and do a couple of different versions. But the idea is like with your problem statement, knock out as many ideas as you can in, in eight minutes. You, you can do more than eight. If you want to do two sheets, you can do two sheets. Like just get the creative juices flowing. The concept behind this design thinking, you know, everybody is a designer in this room for today. Um, it doesn't matter how bad your drawing is, like as long as you can explain your idea, then you're good. Um, so yeah, you've got 10 minutes. You can just explain the ideas if you are struggling, but like the concept is like many ideas. You don't have to do completely different ideas. Like you can start with one and go, okay, well, how would I make my better? Thank 
So technically you should have finished eight by minute by now. You need to have ten minutes. time because I want to make sure you guys all leave on time today. Um, we're going to kind of just walk through the next steps, but to be honest, you've done all of the next steps in other phases of this. It's just on your ideas instead of on problems. Um, so the next step would have been amongst your groups to talk about your ideas and discuss the pros, the cons, which ones work, which ones don't work. Then we would vote and prioritize which ideas resonate with each of you. So three votes each again, and then kind of we would have obviously a clear priority of ideas. Then ideally, in that sense, we would then go and plot which ones would have the most impact versus effort. So obviously, you know, some ideas may take a year to build from a technical perspective, some ideas may take 10 minutes to build. So it's it's really important to understand the effort, <clears throat> the effort versus impact and, and how that works. And you can pick what you would then make based on this for, especially for a hackathon project, something like this, having maximum impact with minimum effort is always better for a long-term project. Right, so. So we ideally want to be in the high impact zone, um, and that's where we want to be building products based out of. Um, so then we would share the top solutions and make the decision. Then that's pretty much the end of this streamlined design thinking process that uh, indeed we utilize daily, weekly, monthly on various different projects. 
Um, for a hackathon, it's really great to, you know, what we've done today is we gave you a theme. Uh, you've decided within that theme what you want to solve. You've prioritized what you want to solve. You've come up with solutions of what you want to solve. And so in that way, it gives you clarity, especially for something like a hackathon, that you know you can spend two hours at the start of the hackathon and run through this process, and then your whole group is aligned and you're working towards the same goal instead of spending or starting with one person having an idea and not many people actually believing in it. Like as a group, you've came to this decision and you're all involved and working towards one solution. Um, so I'm curious, you know. How did it feel? Is this something you're going to utilize in the hackathon? Is this something you're going to think about in your you know, everyday lives moving forward? Um, does anybody have any thoughts on this? We were going to have some time for Q&A, but unfortunately, we only have two minutes left. Uh, um, can we give them our email address? Um, so what I'll do is, I think we are sharing this deck, right? Yeah. So we'll share this deck. I'll put my email address at the end of it as well. If you have any questions about the process or anything else, feel free to drop me an email at any time. I know the hackathon is very close, so uh, at any time I'll, I'll be very proactive in answering the Okay, thank you everybody. Uh